We will now reconvene in public session. The time is 5.05. If we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could remain standing for the invocation, please. If we could have a moment of silence for all the chaos that's been going on in this world lately. Just a few seconds of your time, please. Thank you. Oh, I feel high. Item 7.1, recess to, the board will recess the regular board meeting to go to the California Miller Institute Charter School. So, and so a, item 8.1 is the revision. Oh, so, uh, rec we're reconvening at 526, or 527 of the regular school board meeting. Sorry guys. Okay, item 8.1, revision, adoption, ordering of agenda, May 15, 2019. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Mr. Nelson and Mr. Stafford. Any discussion? None? Please vote. Okay, here we go. Uh, item 8.1 is a 5-0 vote. Item 9.1 is an information item report out of closed session. Yes, I have uh, three items to share out of closed session. In a closed session vote by a f vote of 5-0, to zero, the Board of Trustees approved the appointment of Tommy Lo La Rochelle as assistant principal at Heritage High School with an effective date to be determined. And I should have called, I called him Tommy, but because that's what I remember him as, Thomas La Rochelle. Um, second one. Um, assistant principal at Pinnacotti Middle School in a closed session by a vote of five to zero, the board of trustees approved Brenda Burgo as assistant principal of Pinnacotti Middle School with an effective date to be determined. One other item, a dismissal in, in a closed session by a vote of five zero, the board of trustees approved the dismissal of classified employee number 272939. That concludes the closed session report. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Item 9.2, district update by the superintendent. Thank you. As, as Mr. Bennett mentioned, we had the Aspiring Administrators Academy this year, and one of the things that actually Mr. Bennett recommended is that we not only keep it to Parish Union High School District, but consider um, the uh, surrounding districts and, and tapping into the pool of talent that's out there. And so we actually had a ton of people interested in the program, and we did some interviews and, and selected a, an amazing group of participants this year. And they gave up Saturdays, and they gave up evenings to come in and uh, be with me all the time. I think that's uh, that's prize enough just doing that and then uh, learned a lot about a lot of the stuff that you wouldn't get in a normal credentialing program and stuff so it's an opportunity of recognizing them for the completion of the hard work that they did over the course of this year and a sincere pleasure to recognize just some amazing a talent that we have within our district and within the surrounding districts so with that we're going to come down and uh, we have a little a recognition for each of our participants and what we'll do is we'll be calling you guys up individually and uh, Mr. Bennett will be down here with me. We'll give you your plaque. And then if you can come up this side, my left, your right, on the ramp, you'll have the opportunity of uh, meeting with each of our board members and the rest of our cabinet and for the recognition as well.
they're going to they're going to come out they're here gonna, they're going to walk around here. this way you guys so again so what we're going to do again is as i call you up you guys come on up here to mr bennett he'll give you your plaque and then if you can come up the ramp this way you can start with mr williams and work your way all over to dr Arau, and then you can take your seat again so with that we'll be we're kind of going in alpha order for those of you guys so you know where you're kind of lining up uh, from the Menifee Union School District, Martha Armada. From the Parish Union High School District, Justin Anderson. From the Harupa Valley uh, Unified School District, Marie Arau. Uh, from the Paris Union High School District, Heather Avila. From the Menifee Union School District, Lisa Beard. Also from Menifee Union, Kendra Clements. From the Parish Union High School District, Frank DeAnda, Jr. From Menifee Union, uh, Men uh, Renee Ro Forsyth. And Robert's not here, but from the California Military Institute, Robert Guzman. From the Parish Union High School District, Allison King. And from, also from the Parish Union High School District, our newest assistant principal, Tommy LaRochelle. <laughs> from the New View School District, Jennifer McGuire. <laughs> from the California Military Institute, Anthony Maldonado. From the Paris Elementary School District, Maribel Marmalejo. From a, the Romaland School District, and also a new assistant principal to a neighboring school district, Elena Martes. From the Paris Union High School District, Joey Masio. Also from the Parish Union High School District, Shamika McKenzie. From the Paris High School District, Lourdes Madrano. From the California Military Institute, Victor Murillo. From the Parish Union High School District, Gypsy Perez. Also from Paris Union, Timothy Posley. And from Paris Union High School District, Martha Roca Puente. From Menifee Union, Jessica Rose. From Romo Land School District, Amber Santiago. And from the California Military Institute, Jane Sibilia. As I mentioned at the beginning when we were doing this, it's just a huge pleasure to work with all of our uh, participants in the Aspiring Administrator Academy. Each of them have their own talents and are going to be great administrators one day. So thank you guys so much for your participation and, and good luck in the future.
Okay, back to my list now. Um, on May 7th, uh, we had a big contingency from our district go attend the RCO Celebrating Educators Luncheon, where we had probably 10 employees in different areas get recognized by the county for the great work they're doing within our district for our kids. Um, last night was at ELO, English Language Learner Awards at Paris High. Did, they did a great job recognizing kids that have been um, improved their scores on the, the, I can't remember the name of the test and how they changed it on me. LPAC, LPAC. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the ones that have been redesignated along the way also. So it was a great night over there. May 1st, we had a big group of our administrators attend the AXA Region 19 Awards Night and where Kirk Skorpanich was um, named as the Human Resource Administrator of the Year. Yay for Kirk. <laughs> May 3rd, May 3rd um, we had our, all of our employees of the year um, that could make it attend the Paris o Rotary Honors Dinner over at Bob Glass Gym, and it was so they're all recognized there. It was a very nice event. Um, next week, on May 22nd, we have the retiree celebration, which will be here in the testing room, I believe, Kirk, or in the boardroom. It's here in the boardroom. In, here in the boardroom next next uh, on the 22nd next Wednesday. Um, tomorrow's the the district health fair at Heritage High School. So if you want some questions about your health insurance, you head over there and they'll answer questions for you. At the Riverside Association of Educational Office Professionals, RCAOP, Bosses Night a, a couple weeks ago, Zoshi Trujillo was surprised when she was announced as the Education Office Professional of the Year. She, she worked for, as Joe's administrative assistant over in technology. Last week was teacher, uh, teacher uh, recognition week and we, we, uh, we, and this next week is the uh, classified employees um, week and then the following week is during Memorial Day we, we're going to participate in the ACE program which is appreciating this classified employees we're one of 10 districts in the state that are doing taking part of this and that'll be where we're, the administrators are going to trade spots with the and go do some work that the classified people take and do so I think I'm my, my only thing is I can cook so I think I'll be in the kitchen <laughs> Audrey has to get me a hairnet though <laughs> but I may make the food too tasty that the kids will <laughs> demand that I'm back in there cooking again. Right. Um, the district had an excellent showing at the first first uh, annual Riverside County Computer Science Community Summit. The event features over 80 students computer science projects and num numerous hands-on activities and, uh, and workshops. So we had a nice show in there from, um, I think, from every one of our schools, Joe? Yep. Yeah, we had every one of our schools participate. And right now, we're right in the middle of testing season, so SBAC's going on right now, and AP testing, so some of the administrators are getting a little worn out, chasing kids around and getting them in the right spot, but we're proud of them, what they're doing. And that would conclude my report for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Next item is 9.3, information item reports by student representatives to the Board of Trustees and recognition of the 2018-19 student representative by the Board of Trustees. And Mr. Stafford. From Scholar Plus and the Online Academy, we have student representatives, Dominique, Herzog Balderas. Oh, she's here. Okay. Good evening, Board President Mr. Garcia, Board Members, and Superintendent Mr. Bennett and the Cabinet. My name is Dominique Herzog Balderas, and I'm a senior at Scholar Plus. I'm excited to be here this evening to share our news from our school. Okay, we begin our day with a You Matter morning check in. This gives the students a chance to share how we feel, develop empathy for others and their feelings, and build community amongst ourselves. Our school slogan is developing healthy minds, developing healthy futures, and this ties into that. Scholar Plus started out our year with our kindness campaign. We have continued our efforts in this area by partnering with the city of Paris and growing our very own community garden on our campus. Scholar Plus and Paris Lake High School students were invited to City Hall for a tour of their community garden, received training on gardening, and we are fed a great lunch. 
We will continue our training during the week of May 27th at the Alternative Education Center. In April, health teacher Ms. Clifton presented on the dangers of vaping to the 7th, 8th, and 9th graders. It was very educational and informative. We appreciate Ms. Clifton for speaking with our students. All of our seniors are working hard towards graduation. I am honored to share that myself was accepted to UCR in the fall where I will major in biology. Thank you. <laughs> On May 1st, we had a great opportunity to attend the College Signing Day event at UCLA. Michelle Obama was the keynote speaker. She shared words of encouragement and acknowledgement for all graduating seniors, whether they were attending community college, a four-year university, military, or a vocational school. We continue to focus on our parent engagement. All students and parents meet with their supervising teacher every two weeks to review their progress. May 6th through 10th was Teacher Appreciation Week. Each teacher received a thank you note, a pancake breakfast, and small tokens of appreciation all week long. We want to again send a great big thank you and appreciation to all the teachers for what they do to support us. And that is all. Thank you. Can you present these now? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If you could come back up, please. Uh, on behalf of the uh, Paris Union High School District, you're in appreciation for services rendered for the school district, for the betterment of our school district and community. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the administration, I'd like to present you with this certificate of appreciation. So, so much. Okay. You work with my wife. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, next from Heritage High School, we have student representatives Andrea Gonzalez and, and Angelica Valdivio. Oh, sorry. <laughs> technical, technical difficulties. Good evening, President Garcia, members of the board, Mr. Bennett, and members of the cabinet. My name is Andrea Gonzalez. And I'm Angelica Valdivia. We've had a busy month at Heritage. Here are some of the things going on at Heritage High School. In, Ap in April, Heritage hosted our senior mock interviews. Our counseling department did an amazing job organizing 600 seniors for interviews with 125 business and community members. We also hosted a necktie donation drive and we're able to provide all of our young men with a necktie to keep for interviews. Thank you to all the district staff who came and helped us with the interview. April 20, 22nd to 26th was Public School Volunteer Week. We've had an amazing group of parent volunteers that have been so helpful with many of our events all around campus. A rodeo and karaoke celebration was held to honor our parent volunteers. Seventh, ASB hosted our fifth annual VIP prom, which is a special dance for students with special needs in our district. It is one of our favorite events we host. We even presented this event at our leadership conference in hopes of other schools providing this same opportunity to their students. We had a great night with about 200 people in attendance. Thank you to all the district staff who helped make this event possible. The Make-A-Wish Club has granted their second wish. We were able to purchase a special needs wheelchair bike for a little boy from Riverside who has a life-threatening nervous system disorder. The Spanish Festival took place on Friday, April 26th. Students and members of the community enjoyed a great evening of delicious food, dancing, and lots of fun. Besides a DJ and live band, five of our HHS students performed at the event. Spanish Club would like to thank all who attended and supported the festival. Our student of the year is Dylan Tran. Dylan will be attending Princeton University on a full ride scholarship 
in the fall. Sarah Ardenas is our classified staff of the month. Sarah is always goes above and beyond. She's a great support to all our students and staff and always has a smile on her face. We appreciate everything Sarah does for our HHS family. Scott Malone is our teacher of the month. He's part of our science department and a mad scientist. <laughs> mad Mr. Malone encourages students to think outside the box. It reminds them that, it's, it, 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 that it is okay to fail. My bad. He is always positive and willing to go the extra mile for his students. There are so many great things happening at, H at Heritage every day. As seniors, we who have spent the last four years walking the halls of Heritage, we have been truly blessed to have experienced our high school years here. Before we conclude our presentation, we'd like to give you all a small gift as a token of our appreciation. As always, thank you for all your time and continued support of Heritage High School. Hey, we never said you guys could leave. <laughs> Actually, uh, I would like to, um, on behalf of the board trustees and the administration, I also wanted to thank you guys for an awesome year of, of presentations and everything. And thank you for, I know you guys are seniors and won't be back next year, but we'll miss you. But thank you for everything you've done. So, Andrea, thank you. Thank you. And Angelica, thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce the Paloma Valley High School student representative, Marizal Karen. Good evening, board members and cabinet. My name is Marizal, and I, before I start, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for letting me present. Um, it's been a really fun two years doing this. Um, I'm finally graduating and moving on to my future college, um, Cal State Fullerton, and I will be majoring in communication. So I just want to say thank you so much for letting me do this. Okay. Go Titans. <laughs> Go Titans. <laughs> All right. So the annual end of the year ASL show was held on May 8th and 9th and had some theme had the theme emotions to show the different types of emotions through songs. Miss Callis and her dual ASL, ASL 3 honors and ASL 4 honors class put the show together and worked on the show for two months. Great job, Bobcats. And that's me. <laughs> I, I, I worked hard on it. <laughs> ASB students had donuts and coffee for teachers and staff during Teacher Staff Appreciation Week, and they all enjoyed it. Thank you, teachers and staff, for giving us students a second home away from home. Every senior who filed their FAFSA got invited to FAFSA Cashella event hosted by College and Career Center, and it was a really fun event. Many, many seniors won fun stuff like a Keurig, a bike, and even 10 lunch, deten lunch detentions were given, which some students absolutely loved. <laughs> Famous Uno came to perform at their school on the track, and the students absolutely loved this event. CSF induction ceremony was held in the gym and students and parents were able to watch their kids celebrate their academic success. The seniors who were seal bearers were honored to a candlelit ceremony and received a sash in honor of CSF. UCLA College Signing Day was held on May 1st and PVHS students were invited to visit UCLA and watch multiple speakers, actors, singers, and more to celebrate every student's success on their future on pursuing college. And I wanted to hug Michelle Obama really badly, but I didn't. <laughs> the Dance Spring Concert was held from April 30th to May, 4th, May 3rd, and these 
and each of these students have been working hard on trying to perfect their routines and they did an amazing job. Good job, Wildcats. And last but not least, cheer had their stunt games and they had been doing a fantastic job and these girls work every morning to showcase their routines. Great job, Wildcats. And I just wanna say thank you again for letting me present. Thank you. Fullerton, I look forward to having you join us. I was class of 77, which is a little bit before your time. But I am very pleased that, that you will be joining our school. And I would like to present you this certificate of appreciation for being with us for the last couple of years. Thank you so much. Take care. And now let's welcome from Perris High School student representatives, Melanie Calderon and Erendida Corona. Good evening, President Garcia and cabinet members, um, Superintendent Bennett and I mean, board members and cabinet. Um, I just wanna say I'm very thankful to have been given this opportunity and despite furthering my education at UC Davis, I'll always regard Paris as my home and I will place you guys in good hands with my partner, Erendita, and I hope she does great things. So we leave you guys with this video. They look like they point her sister.
And now, as I like to say, we save the best for last. Penacotti Middle School student representatives Jayani Green and Janice Green. Did I say that right? It's close. Well, how about we do this? I, I, I didn't did ask for it. So. <laughs> Ms. Carlos, how about I get you come to the podium, please? They did a nice job setting it up. You want to see it? Thank you so much. How did you say their names? Jayani and Janice. Janice, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Wow. First time in 36 years I've ever gotten to address the board. <laughs> <laughs> About time. President Garcia, members of the board, Mr. Bennett, and cabinet members. I'm Mrs. Cardos, elementary school director at Penacotti Middle School. Welcome. Hello. I guess so. <laughs> I'm obviously not the technology person at Penacotti Middle School. Why don't you do that? And I'll, okay. I'll just do this from here. <laughs> she knows. She knows. All right. Um, our Pelly team, now called IPP, we've rebranded it. Uh, it's for involving parents at Penacotti. Well, Penacotti's first annual March Brightness event on March 29th, students were surveyed as to whether they needed more help in math or English, and the overwhelming number of them wanted math, um, of the students who responded. We had over 350 responses, so that was a nice, a nice uh, selection. Uh, the night included sessions of SBAC program tools where the parents were shown how to use the SBAC program itself, and reviews of SBAC question format, and procedures, and the biggest hit of the evening was watercolor works with Mr. Bennett. Every one of the students and parents had an opportunity to have a brief watercolor lesson and sat down, and every one of them, it was, it was amazing. They walked out, and I had family picture time with some wonderful people from local art, so it was really well, well accepted and appreciated. Um, then we've had this, sum this last summer, this is a term to make up for it. Uh, we had parents and students enjoy the evening of our open house and science for words night. Uh, a words presentation was, was held along with um, interactive opportunities for parents to participate. <coughs> uh, we have a new thing that Mr. Vic Davison started this year. It's called United Families of Penacotti, and we have a few awards nights. The last one was a few weeks back, and Mr. Davison he sent out a really nice email. Thank you to the staff. And he said, thanks, friends, for making our second United Families Night a success. We had over 150 people, standing room only, come and receive great information about Penacotti and celebrate their students. There's a few pictures taken by Mr. Lara. And the nice thing about this, it's the, um, it's both um, APAC and uh, UNIT committee combined together coming on the same night. So it's a really good thing on all fronts. Um, I have a picture of Mr. Lara. And I'm very proud to be in this receiving this certificate. Uh, coming up, we have uh, May 31st, uh, we have the annual elementary student orientation coming to Harris Elementary District. Uh, ISD, web, dance, sports, campus clubs, athletes, Hilma, all will be out um, presenting activities and going through all sorts of things that are getting connect kids connected and involved. I'm trying to use a buzzword. Am I doing a good job? <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the next one would be our awards nights coming May 28th. Um, all of our awards will be held on May 28th, including um, the seventh grade and eighth grade, which are really separate nights. So if you'd like to come and join us for that, it's all On June 5th, we have Head Start Dinner promotion, and we'd love to see you there. And uh, bring a hat and put you in the sun, sun cream. And um, our last day of school, the eighth graders will take off for their Knott's Berry Farm Celebration Day. It's 
academic success because they only take a course for high school students, which of course creates a little bit of encouragement. Seventh graders will enjoy their annual seventh grade field day, and that always is a lot of fun. All games, pranks, party stuff. And we hope that at this point you will join us for our end of year activities. Have a, as the kids say, and I quote, Pumasational summer. And thank you for uh, allowing my students um, over the years to participate and to learn things that are truly useful in the future. And again, thank you for your support. And thank you very much. Thank you. Young ladies and gentlemen, students, um, you're more than welcome to leave and you're more than welcome to stay. It's your choice. That was kind of uh, unanimous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like they need it. They wouldn't be the ones that ever sit in our episode. And now can I have the administrators there in the back come to the front, please? Oh, just just, 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 just. <laughs> Okay, item 9.4, PSEA President Vicki Mueller or her representative. No? Moving on. 9.5, CSEA President Josh Rushing or his uh, representative, spokesman? No? Let's move along. 9.6, comments by the Board of Trustees. Dr. Arau? Thank you, President Garcia. Well, uh, I had some comments, but the students, uh, some of them, or most of them, left. So I want to start with uh, congratulations, first of all, to Mr. Skorpanish for being the AXA Human Resources Administrator of, of the year. Uh, besides doing an outstanding job here at the uh, Parish Union, uh, how Mr. Bennett mentioned about the Inspiring Administrators Academy, obviously is, uh, is and it was a, a big success because some of the graduates, before graduating, they already had a positions, right? Some of them assistant principals in another, in another schools. So thank you for, for doing that. Uh, I had the opportunity also to attend the 2019 RIMS AVID Seniors Recognition from the several counties that are here in Southern, Southern California. It was great, uh, excellent ceremony. Uh, congratulations to all the high schools for the number of students who uh, participated, and uh, especially to Paris High School. I was really impressed by the number of students, the number of seniors in your AVID class, Mr. Santos. Uh, based on the uh, number of students, so uh, if you made a, the correlation is uh, really, really high compared to other, to other high schools. So thank you for, for doing, uh, doing that. Uh, thank you also to all the teachers and all the staff members at the district, at the site levels. Uh, we are at the end of this uh, school year. Uh, and this is what we are looking for right throughout the year. That's what we are working throughout the year and we are looking for for the graduation ceremonies. But that is our main objective. We always have said we want our students to graduate from high school and then go to college. And we saw the different events related to college, the college si signing days, the uh, avid recognition for the seniors, and uh, so on. So thank you for doing that. And uh, uh, next year, this uh, 1920, we are going to have the new program where our students are going to be taking classes from professors from Mountain San Jacinto College. Uh, what, what is going to be the name of that uh, program, Mr. Bennett? Do we already have a name? The Annex. Okay, and it's going to be housed in uh, every every high school? Oh, yes, well, Starting with Heritage, with Heritage High School. Will be the oh, okay. Oh, okay, excellent. I, I just wanted to ask uh, the name. Uh, about how many classes are we going to start this program? Um, at Heritage Hill, we'll have uh, English 101 and advanced English 101. All right, excellent. And how many students do we have already in that program? Well, right now there's already 17, but we're working on getting to advanced this time, and then we have more after the 
Great, great. So this is uh, the first year that we are going to have this program, and honestly, that is one of the big things that, that I have been uh, dreaming as an educator, as a board member, that in a few years we are going to have students from Perus Union graduating with their high school diploma and the AA. If we combine the uh, classes from this program with Mountain San Jacinto plus uh, the classes that our own teachers are teaching, the ones who have a master's, who have a dual doctorate, enrollment. the dual enrollment, yeah, the dual enrollment. So it, it is doable, yeah. And uh, we are, I'm really excited to see that. Thank you to cabinet. I know that it has been an effort that started, what, almost two years ago, we can, we can say, right? Uh, so thank you for, the, for doing that for our students. That's it. I just want to say thank you for a uh, great school year. I, uh, thank you to all the administrators, and uh, please thank your uh, teaching staffs, all your classified employees as well, and thank you for everything that, uh, that you guys do for the students. We appreciate it quite a bit. Um, I, that's the whole reason why we're here is for the students. And, uh, and my favorite part of the year was coming up in a few weeks for graduations. I get to see a lot of those kids who have been putting in years of, of hard work walk across the stage to get their diploma. So um, I really appreciate everything you guys do, and, uh, and uh, thank you for everything you do, and I hope everybody has a fun summer. First of all, last week when I went to my mailbox, there were four envelopes in there that turned out to be thank you cards from the students over at Paris High School that I had the opportunity to conduct the senior interviews with them. And one of them even told me that the very next day she uh, interviewed for Avid Tutor and got hired. So I kind of felt, oh, that's pretty cool. I feel like, you know, she made me feel like I had something to do with that. <laughs> also, you know, it, it's amazing how karma will work. I'm the father of four girls, three of whom are now seniors in high school. And getting elected to the board the, when they're senior year, <laughs> um, yeah, they've been nervous. I even signed up to speak at their graduation ceremonies. And so I don't actually have to embarrass them. They just think I'm going to. But I tell you what, this makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> so I want to thank you all for the help. Uh, getting through, having all these girls coming through, going through the high schools. Oh, I'm actually only 37 years old. Oh. <laughs> They're laughing. They know I'm older than that. All right. So anyway, I just want to appreciate uh, the district and, and, uh, and uh, Paloma Valley and, and uh, Scholar Plus for everything that they've done for my girls. Thank you. Well, the students are gone, but uh, I'd just like to let them know we're here for them. We work here for the students. I know you do you care about all of our students. Uh, the board, we're pretty much volunteers and I would do this any time, any place. This is rewarding to see our kids grow, see our staff grow. Um, I've been with the district for many years and watched people move up through the ranks. And it, it's really a place I appreciate being around and being of service. So thank you for everything you've done this year. And see you at graduation. Hope it's not too hot. <laughs> OK. I, too, want to thank all of uh every staff member from certificated administrative to classified to our volunteers to our sheriff's department just anybody and everybody who's involved with the community our students especially um this this is our favorite part of the year but there's reasons for that to see the kids evolve and get to this point brings so much satisfaction to me and i know uh it brings satisfaction to the board and the cabinet for all everyone's hard work but I do want to thank you. I want to say, you know, sunscreen on graduation, water. Uh, Ms. Tejeda, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and please let the students know we really appreciate them. I know I'm not going to enjoy it because my kids are going to take it from me, but thank you very much. Please let them know. Moving on, item 10.1, invitation to address the Board of Trustees. Okay, and I'll be reading the statement here. Indivi individual speakers shall be allowed three minutes to address the Board on each agenda or non-agenda item. The Board shall limit the, shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. With Board consent, the President may increase or decrease the time allowed for public pre presentation. Depending on the topic and the number of persons 
persons wishing to be heard, the president may take a poll of speakers for or against a particular issue and may ask that the additional persons speak only if they have something new to add. And our first person is Diane Kavanaugh. Come on down. No? Oh, here we are. Hi, good evening. I've never been to a school board meeting. Um, those, all the kids are amazing. So I think I learned from them. President Garcia, Board of Directors, Superintendent Bennett, and Cabinet members. I am here because I applied for an inter-district transfer for my son. The first uh, transfer dated April 8th was denied. I submitted an appeal and it came in the mail yesterday dated May 10th, denied. On both of the denials, no reason is listed. And I would like to get information as to what the criteria is for an acceptance or denial, as none has been given to me. Once you get through, we could have Mr. Bruff speak with you uh, about that. What, he's our director of student services. I hope that answers your question. This gentleman over here will be able to assist you with all your questions. You can keep going if you like. You have a little bit of time left. Um. I think I'll let it, our friend Calvin continue. Thank you. Next, I have a Martin Wollen. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for letting me come up and speak. Um, as I told Superintendent Bennett, I retired as a high school teacher um, last June. I taught AP uh, TV design and photography. and. Um, credit recovery using Apex, SLS, Titan Tech, Cyber High. Um, I have a close, the school that we'd like Martin to go to, Vista Marietta, they asked, off, actually offered me a job a number of years ago. And I was very impressed with the school. There are a number of classes, to my knowledge, that are offered at Vista Marietta that are not offered in this district. And one of them is my father was in the Air Force for 30 years flew most of the time. Prior to my teaching, I was a photographer for Lockheed Martin, and I photographed mostly with the Department of Defense. Um, and Martin wants to do Junior ROTC Air Force, which, at, to my knowledge, they have Navy Junior ROTC, but not Air Force Junior ROTC. In addition, Martin's two passions are to are music and to become a pilot. And he's been going to take music theory after school on his own time again, to my knowledge, they do offer it at Vista Miri at an AP class in music uh, theory. Uh, did I say music theory? I might have made this up. Music theory. And they also have three loves of the concert band. So his two loves are music and, and to be a pilot. He has a flight simulator at home, which he has been using, which is a realistic flight simula simulator. When he flies from California to New York, it takes five hours. He's doing his ground school right now to become a private pilot. And um, because my father passed away before he was born, he really wants to follow his footsteps. So I think the classes that we'd like to take are a good reason to allow us for the district transfer, in a district transfer. So um, do you, does anybody have any comment? Or is there any way we can get this solved today? Or do we have to do another appeal? So we're governed by the Brown Act, where we're not supposed to give answers to your direct questions, but okay. Mr. Broff right here can answer your questions because he's not he's not the board, so he can answer all those questions and help you. Okay, <laughs> all, right. all right, well thank you, thank you for your time. Okay. 
Cindy Barris, come on up, please. A little bit nervous. Uh, President Garcia, Superintendent Bennett, board and cabinet, thank you for allowing me this time. I just wanted to make a statement. Tonight is my last board meeting in the state of California. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll have to attend them in another state, but I'd like to read a statement I prepared just, just so you know how I feel. I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to the board, the cabinet, and my PUHSC family. Um, many of you don't know this up here, but this year's probably been mm, the most difficult year of my life thus far. We'll hope it stops here. Um, but my, PUH my PUHSD family has made the unbearable, not only bearable, but fun. So they've really, really extended themselves this year. It has truly been an honor working with Dr. Newman and the Ed Services team. I've learned many lessons on leadership, professionalism, and what it takes to be a real team player. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There are too many people from PUHSD who have impacted my life to list by name. But I hope that they all know who they are. I've worked, in, <laughs> I've worked in six district. I, I know, I'm sorry. It's been tough. It's been a tough year. Um, and I'm not really a crier, geez. <laughs> if you know me at all. Um, I've worked in six districts in two different states. And it is really the people here at PUHSD who make a difference. Um, they're not just my friends, they're my family. I haven't had a lot of family this year, and they've all been there for me. I had every intention to stay here and retire from PUHSD, but unfortunately, circumstances changed, and I will be returning to my home state of New Mexico, where I can finally join my husband. Thank God he still likes me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that year away has kind of helped that. <laughs> um, I, I want to thank you for the opportunity that I've had to work here. And I know that I could work here every day of my life and not give back a fraction of what my PUHSD family has given to me. I wish you all the best. If you're ever in the Silver City area, look me up. It's a very, very small town. We have one high school of 600. I was notified yesterday that I will be their instructional coach. So I'm very excited. So maybe I won't have to attend board meetings, <laughs> but we'll be in the we'll be in the phone book, all three pages of it. So <laughs> give us a call if you're in the area. Lovella Singer. Um, Superintendent Bennett and to the um, Mr. Garcia board president and to the board I'm very happy to be here this evening I um, just really am so pleased to uh, come and offer a word of thanks uh, to a group of young people unfortunately they are not here um, and to Mr. Um, Mr. Douglas Douglas Cousins. Um, they came at a time when I um, needed and appreciated them most uh, with our community garden project. And so um, <coughs> it was probably two years ago the idea came up to have our garden. Um, and of course, there were all kinds of wonderful things in the way, but we pressed on and were able to move forward with it. Um, I remember actually meeting with Superintendent Bennett, telling him the idea. And as things worked out in some wonderful way, the city of Paris had the Grow Paris project. And we were able to join in with them and take advantage of um, folks in the community that had the skills necessary to assist us with the project. And, um, Superintendent Bennett had a suggested um, the connecting with uh, Mr. Cousins, and of course, um, 
I wasn't able to do it immediately, but roundabout we got connected and he and his students were a great benefit to the creation of our, our garden. So I see I only have one minute left. So I'll just say that um, the young people from the FFA of Paris High back in November came to the museum um, and built our raised beds and that was the first big step towards getting um, our garden prepared for our ribbon cutting, which occurred on January the 30th. Uh, the, the mayor and part of the city council came out and we were able to um, open our garden. We've been able to share vegetables and healthy food to people in the neighborhood and um, enjoy them together with um, our community. And we're so happy to be a part of the Grow Parish Initiative. And we wanna, we're here tonight to thank Mr. Cousin and the FFA for their contribution to making our garden happen. So I have a notebook. Um, I also had some slides of the kids actually um, putting it together. I shared that with Superintendent Bennett. Um, but we do, I have a notebook here and I'd love to share some of the students' pictures with you all um, at the end of the meeting or wherever you deem appropriate. Uh, thank you again. We're also on the Grow Paris website, uh, our garden. So. Thank you again to Mr. Cousins and FFA. Eleven one is consent calendar. Approval of the consent calendar items. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Mr. Nelson, Dr. Rao. Any discussion? Please vote. Wait, 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 wait. Discussion. There is discussion now. The, well, there's no discussion necessary. We discussed the item. And I think that everybody, let's say anything. Can you say no to the consent calendar? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Please vote. Item 11.1 .1 is a 5 0 vote. Item 12.1 is the information item, Paloma Valley High School Professional Learning Communities update. Yeah. Uh, President uh, Garcia and the board, this is uh, our professional learning community update. And so what we wanted to do is start bringing uh, updates to you in regards to the great work that our school sites are doing. So today we have our principal, Jennifer Tomazian from Paloma Valley High School, along with William Bartholomew. He's going to be coming up, and he's a, currently a math teacher, part-time math coach, but next year he'll be our full-time math coach over at Paloma Valley High School. Oh, and also POC Team of the Year. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, President Garcia, members of the board, Superintendent Bennett, Cabinet, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Um, you know, when Dr. Newman said we'd like to maybe present about some PLC stuff, I thought of our PLC Team of the Year, our Algebra One team. Um, and so Mr. Bartholomew leads that team. There's nine teachers on it, many of whom seem to have little league practice happening tonight with their children. <laughs> um, but I have been so impressed with the growth that they have made as instructors in their classroom with students and as instructional leaders on campus. And so I'm gonna let Bill tell you a little bit more about what that journey's been like and how they got there. And I heard we're wrapping that journey into five to seven minutes. So <laughs> um, first of all, I just found this quote and I think this kind of sums up what the PLC finally means to us and that is, I think every teacher has successes and failures in the classroom, but very rarely have we had the opportunity to share it or see it, and we definitely don't usually share our failures. And I think that's what's happening. It's more powerful than even sharing our successes. So we've been on a journey with three years now or whatever, and it's been, we, we tried really hard for two years. And it was finally these three questions, and they've morphed a little, but this is what Ms. Tomasian brought to me at the beginning of the year, and it really shaped how we kind of proceeded through this. And so we'll talk about these three questions as we go out or go through it. Um, so one of the things we noticed is that, um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad you got the joke. It's, there aren't 371 <laughs> slides. But that's what we were trying to do before. We were, we thought we were supposed to take a, the district exam and then give it and break it down and get a bunch of amazing information from it, and it wasn't happening. Okay, the good news is there's only like 10 more slides. All 
right? <laughs> but that's how we felt. We were trying to do the right thing, but we were just taking gigantic bites and they weren't working. Um, and I'm not sure where it came from, if it was Dr. Newman or Ms. Kamasian, or we do a lot of professional development, and I appreciate that so much, wherever that's coming from, because I've been in districts that were amazing districts, but we just were always out there like, good luck. So like here we actually get, and this is the little tidbits that change our lives as teachers. And this was one of them that you can just take a couple of questions. You don't have to take a whole exam. So as a team, we decided we'd start with like three to five question quiz. And in fact, the first week we just chose one problem just to kind of try to get through and see if we could make this work. Um, the three questions were the same that you saw before. I can't remember if I timed these but um, what do we want them to know? And how will we know that they've learned it? And then what are our next steps? And what are our next steps um, kind of breaks down to some <laughs> other things. Like depending on what we learn about our data is how we need to decide where we're gonna go from here. So the first question, what do we want them to know? And we really broke it down. Once again, Ms. Tomasian worked a lot with me just trying to nail this down and keep it simple, because it was so big before, and we made it very simple this year, and it worked. Um, so it was by the end of this week, what do we want our students to know? So we agree as a PLC what that is. Then we want to decide, um, then we, at that time, we talk about some strategies. We talk about um, what we might do. Our first big breakthrough, it's kind of funny, but this, you'll hear party or a battle if you've heard it. It comes from this PLC. And it actually was in when we were going through the data, but I, it fits on this slide, so it's here. So um, what it was is I was coming from Algebra 2, teaching Algebra 1 for the first time in a while. I'd forgotten that they needed help adding and subtracting integers. I just assumed I'm going to show you, you're going to do it. And that's a teacher in his own classroom. I would have just stuffed her like, what, what did I do wrong? These kids should know how to do this. Justin Shives had like amazing scores compared to all of us. Justin, this is his first year with us. Um, and then the other teachers, including me, were pretty low. We were like, what did you do that we weren't doing? And then he told us this party in the battle, and that's how he does adding and subtracting integers. And I think that kind of started breaking it that, OK, maybe this is worth something to the people who are a little on the edge or whatever. So this was just kind of, so if you ever hear party or battle, and we can explain it to you when we have more time time but it was just the breakthrough of like this is what I did and we all went back and did it and all of our kids were able to add and subtract <coughs> integers I mean like the difference between night and day so that was the beginning like like hey this is working all right so how will we know they've learned it so we had to, we have to decide as a team what data we want to collect luckily in math I think it's a little easier for us because a lot of the time is is that they get the correct answer um, there are such things, projects, labs, writing, that kind of thing. And then how do we collect it? So we began saying, hey, we're going to make three question quiz every week. And one of the things we found out is that we all gave that quiz and we all came back with the data and we all looked at it. And it was working well, but not every teacher liked an online quiz. Some wanted to do paper. Some wanted to do a ticket out the door or do it just on whiteboards. And we found out that we would just allow that and see what happens. And we had a lot of freedom, which was awesome. Because we'll see what came from that is we learned that how you collect that data and how you are asking the question was some of the most powerful discussions we had, some of the more powerful discussions that we had as far as, um, well, I gave it as part of a big test. They just had the three questions embedded, and I gave just one question a day and just the difference we had a lot of discussion about why that is and what was better for students um, so this is how we started collecting the data I'd send out a Google form every week and you can see there's no laser pointer on here <laughs> all right anyway <laughs> it's, it's a little weird not to have a laser pointer but um, so each question and they would literally just have to I'd send them the Google form, they'd put in how, what their percentage was, and what that does is I could see the responses. In the beginning, we actually, because on Google Forms you can do the, the spreadsheet, so we'll create a spreadsheet. In the beginning, it was, we kept it, um, 
where they don't see the names. Secret, yeah. They had code names. Anonymous. That was the fancy word I was looking for. All right. So, and it was good, but we'd say, hey, the person who got this score, you know, and it, we found out that wasn't going to work. So we did code names, and that was fun, but then, like, we, who's Batman? I'm Batman. And it was, like, just got kind of weird. What we grew as a group, and we were actually able to say, okay, who got those amazing scores? And then we'd look at what they did, and they'd talk to us about what they did. And what was a bigger breakthrough, I think, was, all right, somebody would say, I got a lousy score, and I think I did a good thing. Let me tell you what I did, and you guys can do input. And we really had a lot of back and forth about what we were doing that wasn't working and what we were doing that was working. So this was just a Google form, one of the ones that we had for one of the weeks. So you could see that we could see the data really quickly and talk about what scores were good. And we'd also see that teachers had like two good periods and one terrible period, even though they'd done all the same thing. So we talked a lot about that as well. So it was great. It was a freedom that we were all able to talk and not feel bad or not judge anybody. Um, so the next, the last question is, what are our next steps? And this one became very important. Okay. So after we look at the data, like I said, we'd look at the best results because we wanted to know what brought the best results. But we'd also talk about what that meant. Was it that specific method or was it that time of day? So we really got to dig in deep with maybe places we were scared to talk about before because we didn't want anybody to know that sometimes we had great results and sometimes we didn't. And of course, we always wanted to know whether we could move on to the next topic or not. So that was kind of all part of this discussion. So you can see that the third question was where we had most of our discussion as far as breaking things down. This is just a refresh of the TLC cycle. And of course, we repeat it. We don't always start at the beginning. In fact, most of the times we start at looking at our data. We'll go through that data. And the repeat is somewhere in the middle of our PLC as we look towards what we want to accomplish for the next week. So also on this, allowing us to come together as teachers outside of the classroom and spend that time making calendars and essential standards that we could all agree on helped us to be on the same page going into this. So it made the PLC very effective. And without that, if we were all coming in and trying to figure out who's going to do what when, that would have just spent our PLC time. So this time we're allowed to spend outside the classroom or brought into the district office um, has just been uh, very valuable. Oh, is that the thing? OK. <laughs> right. So what we have learned, um, first of all, that uh, you don't need a lot of questions to collect a lot of valuable data. If I was going to tell anybody, that's the first. Just start small. Just start small. Allow teachers um, freedom. As we all know, teachers aren't great with being told exactly what to do. It's just Part of why we got into this is we're creative and we have ideas and we want to watch those ideas grow. What I found is that the teachers, as creative and free as they wanted to be when they saw something that worked better, that was what they wanted to be. So it was very good to see how we could just keep looking at. Also, there's no penalty for not doing your homework. So like I've been in, there were times where like, hey, who didn't do their data? And that's just not what we do. We have the data that we have, we use it, we grow with it. Nobody feels bad if they didn't get it in. And then that's all part of the discussion too sometimes is why didn't your data, well, the internet went down on that Friday because whatever, that cable keeps getting cut somewhere in Riverside or something, all right? But <laughs> whatever happens there, so, all right? And no, it only happened once this semester. This <laughs> doesn't happen all the time. And they got it up fast, it was good. All right, um, and once again, to remember that we're professionals, I want, this district treats us as professionals, and I really appreciate that. I don't feel like they're like, hey, you're going to do it my way because I went to this thing that told me this. It's just there's so much discussion, and uh, Dr. Newman's willing to listen to any crazy idea we have and uh, just pass it along to everyone, and you guys have always been great. Um, somebody needs to lead, but that doesn't have to be the same person every week. I mean, I was very lucky in that I had the time to plan it and get this down. But I could do it very easily without extra time now. But um, somebody needs to be 
pushing that in the right direction. Um, like I said, I think the better thing, PLC was great in making us better teachers, I think, but even more in just um, looking at how we teach and why we do it. And the, the group has really grown strong just as a group of teachers. And I also see this kind of going to other groups at our school as well, hearing the things we're doing and they're also trying them. So I'm, I'm sure that was over seven minutes. So. All right. Thank you. I just want to say I'm really proud of the team and how, like he said, they don't have an ego and they don't walk in with like, well, who got that low score and who got that high score? They have grown as professionals. They have grown as humans and they're better educators for it. Um, and our kids are getting better results for it, our algebra. Not one students are seeing successes this year that they have not seen before. And so I'm just really proud of the work they've done. Thank you for allowing us to do this and for always supporting the professional development and professional growth that we give our staff. Next item, 12.2, College and Career Readiness Update. Yeah, we're providing an update tonight regarding the College and Career Readiness Indicators. as They have shift, shifts in those indicators, and so we want to bring that to the board's attention and also the progress that we're making as a district. All right. Good evening, President Garcia and board members, Superintendent Bennett and Cabinet members. Um, we're excited to be here to talk a little bit about college and career readiness and the indicators, the California dashboard, and what that looks like. Um, this is something that's fairly new to us um, for everybody. It's only been implemented for the last two years. I think we really feel like we have some solid data this year um, and some comparison data. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how our district is addressing the college and career indicators. So here's kind of a brief overview of what the college readiness indicator looks like. And so if you haven't looked at it before, it can be a little bit confusing because it's some of it is you get this and you're considered prepared. So there's three different levels. You have prepared, approaching prepared, or not prepared. And there's multiple ways of being um, considered prepared. And when you look at the top portion, um, those are single items. So if you meet those single items, you're considered prepared. So if you look at the smarter balance assessments, if you score a three on both the math and English, you're considered prepared. If you score a three or higher on two AP tests, you're considered prepared. Um, we don't have IB, but if you have an IB program, it's scoring four or higher on two IB exams. And then the college credit courses, this is one thing we were just talking about a little bit ago that um, Dr. Rao talked a little bit about is, is the importance of allowing our students as much access to college courses and so as we look at ways to help prepare our students, we're, we're adding more and more college classes to our campuses. And if we don't have teachers to teach them, we're working with the colleges to allow us to be able to have additional courses. So those are all standalone um, indicators. The ones with the arrows next to them, these require additional uh, criteria, which are listed be below. So um, the state seal of biliteracy, if they score a three or higher in ELA on the Smarter Balance Summative Assessment, and they get the seal of bio, the state seal of bioliteracy, they get have to also have one of those additional criteria below. Um, so the smarter balance assessment, a CT pathway, um, three or higher on AP exams, or the completion of a pathway. Um, what's really great within our district, we have two high schools that have um, military programs, and so two years with the military science program, in addition to uh, CMI. Um, they also, if they meet that criteria of the two years and then they get one of those additional items below, they also um, are considered prepared. So based on the college and career readiness indicators, it gives us some options, which I think um, has been really nice to see a way of measuring our students that aren't just based on one measurement with test scores. And so this gives us multiple ways of identifying students that are prepared. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about what that looks like also um, based on each indicator. But something that was just released last month is what's coming soon is, is also some opportunities to look at some additional indicators. Currently, we're, we're collecting data for these measurements. We're not exactly sure what that's going to look like once we get um, it to come out on the dashboard. But they're collecting data to look at what it looks like from the data side on how that might be measured um, in the dashboard. But um, they're looking to add workforce readiness, like certificate type programs, 
um, the completion of food handler certi certification, uh, certification programs, which when we look at Paris High School with the culinary program, I see a lot of options and benefits that we could use that program to support um, the indicator, as well as pre apprenticeship programs and um, also the completion of state or federal job type programs. And then um, for supporting our special ed education students, looking for workability as well as partnerships, um, work-based learning completion, which is really exciting because when you look at the, the indicators, it can be very challenging from our, for some of our special ed education students to meet that indicator without having some additional criteria. So this allows us some opportunities to possibly add some additional uh, measurements. So this is kind of a comparison of what it's looked like over the last three years. So like I said, the dashboard became active last year. So we do have data from 2016, but the dashboard actually um, became live in 2017. So you have a three-year comparison. And um, we show a little bit of growth in 2018. Um, one of the things that we know we've been really working on is cleaning up data and what that looks like. One of the things that's more difficult, and Diane's gonna share a little bit more about this when she talks about the CT pathways, is making sure that we have pathways, they have to be in the com uh, correct order, and what that looks like as far as um, completing a pathway. So we've really cleaned up some data when it comes to our CTE pathways. And then this is um, looking at our students based on our um, total subgroups um, and all students. So 31% of our students were considered prepared. So that was on the previous slide. So that, that means that out of the around, um, we had about 2,083 students that this is um, looking at the data for. So our senior class from 2018, 31% of those students were considered um, uh, prepared. And then when you look at the breakdown, this is how it broke down when you look at the different subgroups. When you look at the state comparison, you'll see a lot of the comparisons are very similar. We're a little bit under the state average as far as the total prepared students, but when you also look at our breakdown of our different demographic groups, they're pretty similar to what the state looks like as a whole. So we definitely have some areas when we're looking at our subgroups that we really wanna work on. We talked a little bit about our students with disabilities. I would also say our EL students, um, we would also like to target a little bit more. And then this is how it breaks down when you look at our overall prepared students, how they met that prepared indicator. So 31% of our students were considered prepared based on the CTE indicator. So remember that um, the criteria to become a, com a prepared student, what it, that includes for the CTE. So some students may have actually met the prepared status in multiple categories too. So when you look at that overall data, it's not gonna total 100% because some of our students met it in multiple categories. So you'll see that a lot of our students met it with the A to G category. That would mean that they had to complete all the A to G requirements, which are what is required for our students to attend a four-year college, in addition to the um, additional criteria below. So 82%, the highest um, percentage of how our students met the prepared status was based on um, A to G. Um, but looking at some of those lower percentages, those are some of the areas that we really wanna start targeting um, with new programs, the college coursework, um, that's not just with dual enrollment classes or concurrent enrollment classes, but also looking at articulation agreements and that type of thing for some of our CTE pathways. As long as students get college credit, um, they become prepared as well. So I'm gonna hand it off to Diane and she's gonna talk to us about our CTE programs. So just to, to um, piggyback on what Julie was saying with regards to um, the uh, indicators is the um, w the development of our courses as we are looking at revising and updating courses. We really internally look to make sure that they're either A through G, they're dual enrollment or articulated, so that they're they're meaningful in the sequence and in the pathways. So when we're looking at new offerings, we want to make sure that they fall in those categories because it helps our data across the board. So this is just a timeline with. Um, Uh, so you can just see the timeline over the last couple of years. Uh, there is some fluctuation. A lot of that is whether the programs, we, we've had some teachers retire over the last couple of years. So when we look at our number of CT pathways and courses, that tends to fluctuate just based on our, the, um, the uh, teachers that we have that are credentialed in uh, CTE. 
Uh, we have a very strong uh, contract with RCOE and working with them and expanding our various programs across the district, which we'll all talk about in the next slide. Uh, we also are working, as Julie had mentioned, articulation is very important so that our students have an opportunity to earn credits while they're here um, in high school. And so we continue to work with RCO and MSJC to RCOE and MSJC to make sure that articulation agreements um, uh, are renewed. And that and I think the challenge for us is really working with the, the teachers and collaborating with them to ensure that they are administering the end of level test at the uh, as the semester ends. So we work very closely with MSJC as they come out and work with our teachers to make sure that students are in a system called CAPEMA so that those credits can be posted once the students complete the course. So when we look at our pathways across the district, this just really just talks about the different industry sectors and the pathways overall and the enrollment over the course of the last three years. We focus on um, when we do, when Carrie and I work on the CalPads with regards to Perkins and the CTE component of it, we look at our special populations or core indicators which involve our students with special needs, EL, and our non-traditional students. And so you can just see it's a snapshot over the course of the last three years and then of course 2018. So at Paris High School, as I think we've mentioned in the past, we've, we've added two new pathways which was the transportation automotive as well as the arts, media, and entertainment, the digital film and production. Those two are contracted teachers through RCOE, but those are also housed in the new buildings at Paris High School. So we're very excited to continue to expand um, into the new facilities. At Heritage High School, again, just a snapshot of the enrollment and uh, the indicators. We did add a public service pathway legal practices. They're doing the CSI, crime scene investigations, um, a lot of really cool things. Uh, we are preparing to build out some of these programs that are new in the district with our new monies per tech ed incentive grant round three. I think I reported that out at our at one of my past uh, presentations that our district was awarded $594,000 to be able to expand CTE programs. So we're very blessed to have um, those funds to be able to continue to expand CTE across the district. Uh, Paloma Valley as well. Um, just a little update, our STEM automotive, uh, Tom Wenzel is retiring, and so we, bummer, he's just an awesome teacher. He really started our automotive program in the district from Paris High to Paloma, uh, but we will be working with the county for the replacement there as well. Uh, but they continue to expand uh, their CTE programs um, as those were efforts for ed services to make sure that students at all of our schools um, have an opportunity to complete um, the pathways. So with that, we have just a little video, because I always like to show a video with just kind of our highlights from our CT programs around the district. Um, so just, is there any questions before we see that? Oh, yes. Oh. Retirement, yeah, yeah, that happens. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, enjoy the video.
Hey, guys, if we can't get it, maybe we can email it to the board. Email it to the board so we can keep moving. Okay. We had it going. Audrey liked it. See? So make the best Another turning point A fork stuck in the road Tom grabs you by the rest Directs you where to go so make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable But in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life So take the phone Still friends in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable But in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life <laughs> Turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Tom grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. So take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on 
But you can see our, our kids have a, a wide variety of opportunities um, for, for career technical education. And so we're excited to just, we're going to keep you updated throughout the year on our programs and how we're expanding and some of the materials and supplies and equipment, things that are building out for the program. So we look forward to sharing out with you again next year. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, item 13.1 is an information item, discipline, April 2019 monthly suspension report. Item 14.1 is an action item, personnel, certificated personnel action item. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Dr. Second. Rao Ms. and Dr. Freeman. Any discussion? Please vote. Hearing none. Wait to vote, Mr. Stafford's oh, catching up. There we go. Okay, you're yeah. good. Yes. Yes. Item 14.1 is a 5 0 vote. Item 14.2 is another action item. Personnel classified personnel action items. Is there a motion? Mr. Stafford and Dr. Freeman. Any discussion? Please vote. Item 14.2 is a 5-0 vote. Item 14.3 is another action item, personnel, new job description, occupational therapist, and authorization to recruit. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Dr. Freeman, Mr. Stafford. Any discussion? Please vote. <laughs> item 14.3 is a 5-0 vote. Item 14.4 is another action item, curriculum 2018-2019, SAFE Schools Plan Annual Update. Is there a motion? So moved. Mr. Dr. Freeman and Mr. Nelson, any discussion? Please vote. Item 14.4 is a 5-0 vote. Item 14.5 is another action item. Curriculum proposal to apply and establish Scholar Plus Online Learning as dashboard alternative school status. N no physical impact. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, was that Dr. Rao? Okay. And Mr. Freeman. Or Dr. Freeman. Any discussion? Please vote. Item 14.5 is a 5-0 vote. 
Item 14.6 is another action item curriculum agreement with Flippin Group to provide professional services for leadership blueprint training funded through the Low Performing Schools Block Grant at total a total cost not to exceed 30000 not the general fund. Is there a motion? So moved. Mr. Stafford, I didn't hear the second. Who was it? Mr. Nelson. Thank you, sir. Please vote. Item 14.6 is another 5-0 vote. Item 14.7 is another action item, curriculum agreement with Voyager Sopris Learning funded through Title I funds in the amount of $30,846.13, not, not the general fund. Is there a motion? Mr. Stafford, Dr. Freeman, please vote. Oh, Mr. Stafford. Yeah, no, no. Oh, I said Stafford, didn't I? Okay, correction. I do have Mr. Nelson and Mr. Randall, or Mr. Freeman. Well, I'm just going on the screen. I'm sorry. I got, I got it right, but I said it wrong. Yeah, just a little bit. Item 14.7 is a 5-0 vote. Item 14.8 is another action item curriculum. Purchase agreement with Solution Tree incorpor Incorporated for Professional Development Services funded through the Low Performing Schools Block Grant at a total cost not to exceed 65000 not the general fund. Is there a motion? And I will get your names right this time. So moved. Second. Hey, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> and Mr. <laughs> Stafford this time. Please vote. Item 14.8 is a 5-0 vote. Item 14.9 is another action item. Building and grounds, inspector and record agreement with Construction Quality Assurance Group, LLC, for the California Military Institute gym and parking slash circulation project funded through the various facilities funds estimated at 375, oh, oh no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm right. $375,384, not the general fund. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Mr. Nelson and Mr. Stafford. Please vote. Item 14.9 is a 5-0 vote. Item 14.10 is another action item. Building and grounds agreement with River City Testing for the California Military Institute Gym and Parking Cir Circulation Project for the Special Inspection and Testing Services funded through various facilities. Funds estimated at $152,411.50, not the general fund. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Dr. Freeman and Dr. Rao. Okay, please vote. Item 14.10 is another 5-0 vote. Item 14.11 is an action item. Building and grounds approval of resolution number 34 for the 1819 authorizing piggyback Piggybacking for, I, how do you say that? Acquisition. Acquisition, thank you, of tracks resurfacing materials funded through various facility funds in the amount of $400,728.24, not the general fund. Is there a motion? Second. I got two people for the first one. Okay, Mr. Stafford and Dr. Freeman. Any discussion? No? Is this for Boma Valley? Is this tracks at Boma Valley? It's part of the uh, stadium improvement project we're doing there. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Please vote. <coughs> Item 1411 is a 5-0 vote. Item 1412, another action item. 
building and grounds approval of resolution number 35 for the 1819 authorizing piggybacking for accusation acquisition acquisition pardon me of bleachers funded through routine restricted maintenance funds in the amount of $231,975.23 and not the general fund. Is there a motion? Second. Mr. Nelson, Dr. Rao, any discussion? Please vote. Let's see. Item 1412 is a 5 0 vote. Item 1413. Is another action item business agreement for consulting service with Vavrinet, Trine and Day LLC for phys fiscal services funded through the general fund in the amount of thirty thousand dollars. Is there a motion? So moved. Dr. Freeman, Mr. Nielsen, please vote. Item fourteen thirteen is a five zero vote. Item 1414 is another action item business appointment of members to the Paris Union High School District Citizens Oversight Committee. Measure T and Measure W bond elections. No fiscal impact. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Mr. Nelson and my second was Dr. Rouse. Any discussion? Okay, please vote. I do have one question. Okay. Uh, this is to. Appoint members for the. Didn't we, we already had a Measure T Oversight Committee, Citizens Oversight Committee. Are those members still on it and we're just appointing other members to it? Or are we com completely resetting it? So, two months ago, I think, but don't quote me on the month, um, we had an agenda item, a resolution where uh, the board adopted to dissolve the Measure T Committee right. okay. and then yeah. combine them. Um, and yeah. so I sent an email out to all of the Measure T committee members um, so that they could apply. Everybody who wanted to serve again uh, did apply. And, and as you saw probably in the write-up, we had eight people apply. One didn't qualify. So that actually worked out really nice because we had seven positions. You're right. I, I had forgotten about that a, a few That's months okay. ago. That's okay. We had a lot going on in the world of facilities the last few months. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please vote. Item 1414 is a 5-0 vote. Item 1415 is another action item, technology and consideration of resolution number 30 for the 1819 to approve use of public contract code section 20118.2, technology procure, 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 thank, what they said, process for IP paging speaker equipment, <laughs> no physical impact, I'm sorry you guys. Is there a motion? So, Second. Mr. Stafford and Dr. Rao, any discussion? One question, is this for all, I couldn't find any particular school, is this for across the district or is this a, at one school in particular or? It's for the Bells and Paging Project at Paloma Valley High School. Okay. So normally with contracts, you know, the consideration would go solely for the lowest bidder, but on technology projects with this, other considerations as far as the type of technology, does it fit within our ecosystem economy, and all those other criteria can take place on a public service procurement contract. So okay. this is the purchase of the equipment. Okay. <laughs> Specific. I didn't see that. I didn't see yeah, I know it wasn't. Well, that has the same bell system, so that's what they're hoping that's going to apply. Really? <laughs> okay. Any more discussion? Please vote. Item 1415 is a 5-0 vote. Item 1416 is another action item. Technology consider of resolution number 31 for 1819 to approve the standardization of the district's paging and loudspeaker system with Atlas IED and Levi Leviton products. No physical impact. Is there a motion? Mr. Nelson and Mr. Dr. Freeman. Any discussion? Very similar to the other one. Uh, is this is this across? Because it looks like it's the wording seems to be a, more about uh, districts paging and loudspeaker systems. Is this just at Paloma Valley as well, or is so, this? So it is, but um, but as like the IP clock-in speaker that we have there, this allows us to call out specifics 
in the bid documents and the drawings okay, that, so um, that this is the specific equipment that will fit in our ecosystem. Um, sometimes with contracts they could say or similar, but in this case it's not or similar. Okay, and this is, possible. yeah, and following this, following this board resolution is allows us to do that. And this is a common practice in technology that that type of system fits in our ecosystem. Any more discussion? Please vote. Item 1416 is a five zero vote. Item 1417 is another action item. Technology multi-year agreement with the school school point for the purchase of web hosting and content management system funded through the general fund in the amount of 28,500. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Freeman and Mr. Nielsen. Did I hear right? Yes. Okay. Any discussion? Please vote. Item 1417 is a 5-0 vote. Item 15.1, Curriculum English Textbook Adoption. No physical impact on, unless or until textbooks are purchase, purchased. 15.2 is Business Revolving Cash Report for the April 2019. Item 16.1 is an action item. Closed session if necessary. Not necessary this evening. All right. Item 18.1, Discipline, Board Review of Discipline Matters. Is there a motion? So moved. Mr. Nelson and Mr. Stafford, any discussion? Please vote. Yes. 18.1 is a 5-0 vote. Item 19.1, other items by the superintendent. Uh, just one thing, I want to thank and congratulate Pauline Garcia, Dr. Garcia, for getting the P Paris Community Adult School accredited for the first time in 50 years. So now it's <laughs> her and her staff did a great job to make that happen, so we're excited about that and for the future of the, the community that's going to be taking classes there. That's m that is my report. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Other items by the Board of Trustees? Dr. Lin? Mr. Nelson? Mr. Stafford? I'll join the party. <laughs> Item 21.1. Wow, we're already here. Adjournment for the regular board meeting of trustees for May 15, 2019. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. <laughs> 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 Mr. Nelson and Dr. Rao. Any discussion? None? Okay. Please vote. <laughs> Need a vote, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> I don't. Twenty-one point one is a five-zero vote, and we will be ending the regular board meeting of trustees at seven seventeen. Well, we're not done. We got two more. Please join the meeting. <laughs> we still have two more meetings, please, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a really bad party. Hit the road. Two more meetings. We have two CFD meetings, so we need you all to either sit down or get out. <laughs> Mr. Freeman, can you join us, please? <laughs> we kind of need you, Mr. Freeman.
Well, I got it at the restroom too. But no, I need to. <laughs> Please join the meeting, guys. Please join the meeting. What are we doing? Join the meeting. Join the meeting. Are you guys signed in? Oh, thank you. Is everyone signed in? One point one, correct. Are we ready? Time is seven twenty. We will call to order the Paris Union High School District acting as the legislative body at seven twenty. And now we go to two. Item 3.1, invitation to address the Board of Trustees on non-agendized items. No takers. Thank you. Item 4.1, general functions, minutes of the Paris Union High School District, legislative body of the Communities Facilities District number 91-1, special board meeting no May 16, 2018. Second. Mr. Nelson. Second. And Dr. Rao, thank you. And any, di any discussion? Oh, this shows from last year. Any more discussion? Randy, are you abstaining? Please vote. <laughs> Item 4.1 4. is a 5 0 vote. Item 4.2 building and grounds resolution number 28. For the 1819 Community Facilities District 91 1, establishing annual special tax for 2019 2020. Any motion? Motion. Second. Mr. Nelson, Dr. Rao. I'm going to skip the discussion part and say vote. Please vote. My jaw dropped. Okay. Item 5.1 is adjournment of the Paris Union High School District Legislative Body of the Community Facility District 91 1, meeting of May 15, 2020. Stop it. 2019. Any motion? So moved. Dr. Rao, a second? Second. <laughs> <laughs> Please vote. Item 5.1 is a 5 0 vote, and we are adjourning at 7 22 p.m. One more meeting, gentlemen. One more. Please join the meeting. Item 2.1, call to order of the Paris Union High School District acting as legislative body of the Community Facilities District number 92-1, meeting to order at 7, it says 5.30, or assume, but it's 7.23 p.m. Close enough. Item 3.1, invitation and address to the Board of Trustees. Still no takers. Item 4.1, general functions, minutes of the Paris Union High School District, legislative body of the community facilities, district number 92-1, special board meeting of May 16, 2018. Is there a motion? So Mr. Nelson? Second. Mr. Stafford, please vote. Thank you. 
Item number 4.1 is 5-0 vote. Item number 4.2, action item, building and grounds resolution number 29 for the 1819 Community Facility District 92-1, establishing annual special tax for 2019-2020. Is there a motion? So moved. Mr. Nelson, do I have a second? Second. Take Mr. Stafford? Somehow, huh? Yeah, please vote. Item 4.2 is a 5-0 vote. Item 5.1 is the adjournment Paris Union High School District Legislative Body of the Community Facility District 92-1 meeting of May 15, 2019. Is there a motion? <laughs> Mr. Stafford. Second. Mr. Nelson. <laughs> Please vote. <laughs> Glad we're having fun. Can we be uh, serious? Item number 5.1 is a 5-0 vote, and we are adjourning at 7.25 p.m.